Blazers right now 35 and 17 with the uh, the clutch win last night and pleased to be joined now on the program by the president of basketball operations for the Trail Blazers, Neil Olshea. Neil, uh, thanks for the time. Uh, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to catch up with us, and I know the fans love hearing from you too. Great. What's going on, guys? Uh, character win last night. I mean, you know, during rough stretches, during rough patches, chemistry is tested for teams, and, and I know chemistry is something you pay very close attention to. What were your thoughts on the bounce-back victory after the uh, real tough loss to swallow against Dallas? Well, you know, Terry and I were talking this morning. I mean, I had trouble getting out of bed Sunday morning. <laughs> I was so depressed after Saturday night. And, yeah. You know, I, I can't imagine what it was like. You know, the coaches get on the plane, work through the night, you know, coming up with a new game prep, you know, go to a lunch meeting, and then, you know, not only play a back-to-back -back against a high-level opponent, but on a quick turnaround, you know, on the road, and, and to come out and give that kind of effort consistently, you know, through the four quarters, um, and then to get, you know, to have Houston come back, you know, put a little bit of, of a scare back into us and have the guys show the resiliency that they did, it really does show to the character and, and you know, and the commitment that the guys have to this team. And, you know, you have a lot of guys that are still playing hurt and they're playing through injuries and they're fighting through it. And I think they all knew, you know, just how critical, you know, getting a split on that trip was. And, you know, when we gave one away Saturday night to Dallas, I mean, it showed a lot of intestinal fortitude to get it right back. How important are you looking at back-to-back -back games like that and uh, where your starters in overtime had to play a lot of minutes in that Dallas game? How important is the bench for a playoff team, and what do you think of the Blazer bench so far this year? Well, you know, I, I think the bench gets a pretty bad rap, and I think people need to, you know, dig a little bit deeper. Um, you know, I, I think it's interesting. You know, last year at this point, we were 30, we were 36 and 16 after 52 and this year we're 35 and 17 and you know that comes you know last year we didn't have a starter miss a game up until the all-star break and at this point this year we've already had 35 games missed by our starters so somebody is stepping into that void and it's got to be the guys coming off the bench because we're only a game behind where we were last year in what's probably proving to be an even tougher western conference so you know, I, I have one stat for you because I want to be prepared for this bench question because <laughs> too many people look at the bench in a vacuum. And, you know, when you look at some of the lower scoring and you just look scoring, some of the lowest scoring benches in the league along with us are the Clippers, Memphis, Houston, and Cleveland. Yeah. And last time I checked, they were pretty good teams. Yeah. So when you, when you play your starters and you try and keep your starters healthy and they're the focal point of your team – you know, the bench isn't going to get as big an opportunity. But to this point in the season, you know, last year our bench ranked 13th in the league in real plus minus. They were a minus 64 on the season. You know, this year we're ranked 7th and we're plus 253. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nobody tell me the guys aren't getting it done when they get an opportunity. And, you know, the, the goal is for them not to get too big of an opportunity because we want our starters on the floor. Yeah, correct. Because that what, that's what makes us a unique team in this league. We think we have – and if not the, one of the best starting lineups in the NBA. So we want those guys on the court. And then we're getting contributions, and it's not always raw numbers. It's not always raw scoring. It's how they play, how they interact with the starters they share the floor with, you know, what their matchups are for a given night. I mean, I think we've seen, you know, the emergence of C.J. McCollum and Myers Leonard lately. You know, we've had Darrell's had big nights off the bench. Alan Crabb stepped up when he needed to to replace Nicholas. Um, you know, everyone forgets we're still without Joel Freeland, who's one of, if not our best defensive big, and our defensive rating is at its best when he's on the floor. So, you know, we're still battling through some stuff right here. And, you know, we said it when it happened with Rolo. It's going to make us a better team down the road. And I think at this point it really has. Talk about Myers specifically. I, I, you know, the cliche we throw out there is, you know, the, the light has come on or he, the game has slowed down for him. All of a sudden, I mean, last night, and I said this in the first segment, I think that the, the most impressive stretch for him in his young Blazers career in, in a key moment against a playoff team on the road in a back-to-back -back, when maybe some dead legs were starting to get to the starters and the guys who played heavy minutes. Myers comes in and goes 4-for-4. Four four. rest of the team combined to go 0-for-4. He outscores the Rockets 9-5 through the first, well, until the 7-15 mark of the fourth. So I know that that's, uh, that's great to see. I know you love to see that from Myers, and, um, and, and he's feeling that confidence now, and, and we're seeing that development in leaps and bounds now at this point in the season. Well, you know, it's easy to forget because Myers is so talented, you know, and, and there's so much raw potential there that 
he's not only the youngest guy on our roster, but you know he's young for a big guy in our league. And you know when we drafted Myers, you, you didn't hear one word out of my mouth or Terry's when we hired him that Myers was a day one guy the way that Damian Lillard was, that it was going to be a two- or three-year project we are going to need to develop, and we just felt like he had the most talent available at that point in the draft. And, you know, he's morphed into a different player. I mean, I think, you know, the initial goal, everybody was hoping because of the body and the physicality, he was going to be a true back-to-the-basket center. And I think now we're finding a much more, uh, you know, a much more comfortable niche for him, you know, playing more of the floor, facing the hoop. And I think more than anything, you know, Mike, what we're done, what would Terry's done, and I'm, real, I'm really happy about it is, we're starting to embrace what Myers is and not vilifying him for what he is. And we're embracing the fact that he's an elite jump shooter that can stretch the floor, run the floor. He rebounds against four man. He's getting better defensively. And I think more than anything, you know, we've always believed in him as a front office. I think Terry has embraced Myers' potential, but gaining the trust and confidence of his teammates that he shares the floor with was probably the biggest challenge for Myers. And I think he's starting to win them over. And that is breeding more and more confidence with Myers. I know he's on on the next segment. I think if you asked him that, I think that would be the most rewarding thing of the last month and a half or so is that the veteran guys on our roster that know how hard it is to win in this league are starting to embrace what he can contribute. When you uh, draft a big guy like Myers, what is your philosophy on development? Do you have a picture of uh, how long it might take for someone like that to develop like Myers has? Well, you know, like I said, I mean, I think, you know, we, we drafted Myers. He barely played as a freshman. He had a good run as a sophomore. He was young in his draft class. You know, we knew it was going to be a couple of years, and I don't think, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody should be surprised. We were trying to win immediately, so we went and traded for Robin Lopez. You know, we didn't make Myers the starter the way that we did with the way that we did with Damian. You know, we had we didn't hedge our bets with Dame, right? We didn't bring in any veterans. We handed Dame the ball day one, and it was his show. You know, once we got Robin Lopez, we were in a win now mode. This year, same thing. We knew we needed to take another step forward. We went out and got a former All Star and Chris Kamen to come in. So, you know, so nobody is, you know, is is developing Myers at the expense of winning. So the minutes that he's getting now are not being given to him. He's earned them. And, you know, hopefully he continues to earn more and more minutes. But at the end of the day, you know, we've got six quality bigs. And whoever has the ability to contribute the most, you know, alongside Rolo and LaMarcus, those are the guys that are going to get on the floor. You know, be it, be it Myers, he's going to continue to have to play at this level, you know, when Joel Freeland comes back. And, you know, Thomas Robinson has contributed when he's got an opportunity. So, you know, I'm pleased with Myers. I, we didn't want to put a tangible number on it, Coach. What we wanted to do is just make sure he was getting better every year and that when he did get opportunities to produce, he was being embraced for what he did do, not what he didn't do. Speaking of bigs, you know, we didn't need reminding of it, but, uh, you know, certainly missed Robin Lopez. His effect on the game, and we talk so much, and you get caught up in it talking about his defense all the time. What he gives this team offensively in terms of screen setting and rolling to the hoop, I mean, his effect on Nick Batum, is, it, it, just, it just jumps out at you when you watch a ball game, the way those guys play together, but it's so nice to have him back. And, you know, Robin's another one of those moves you talked about bringing in Kamen and also Blake with him, moves that maybe didn't move the needle nationally, at least on the East Coast. Robin was one of those moves. Um, how vitally important is he to this team? Well, so I'll give you guys a trivia question that Terry Stotts came up with over the weekend. He must have been he must have been bored, or he must not have been able to sleep after the Dallas game. But so here's a question for you: In the history of the Trailblazers, there are two current players that rank in the top ten in offensive efficiency all time. Who are they? One is number one, and one is number ten. Offensive efficiency. They are they, that we score the most. That the Trailblazers score the most points for 100 possessions when they are on when the they're floor. on the floor. So because you set it up with Robin, I assume he's one. <laughs> yeah. Robin is number one. Okay. Yeah. Myers Leonard is number ten. Wow, that's and a that's good along one. with you know got greats like Kiki Vandeweghe and Terry Porter and Clyde Drexler and Danny Ainge and Buck Williams and Dale Davis and the list goes on. So you're right. I mean, this is you know the the irony is. You know, when Rolo went out, we were ranked second in the league defensively, and we're basically third right now, third hanging around fourth. But the falloff has been on the offensive end. You know, Rolo just – he changes the geometry of the floor. He's an incredible screener. He's a roller. He can catch and finish. He makes the game easier for Nicholas in those secondary pick and rolls. 
And a big part of our offense last year and our efficiency was our offensive rebounding and second chance points, you know, which kind of went away because we just weren't rebounding on the offensive end at the same level. So, you know, those are the things Rolos contributed, and that's why we're, you know, we're probably one bad two minute stretch away from being undefeated since he's returned. Yeah. And now, uh, you know, you hear Ray Allen every day we hear in the paper oh, it says Clippers are after him and this team is after him. What's your thoughts on mid year trades uh, to bring people in or free agents that are out there? Or the Amari Stoudemire situation. Where yeah. The yeah, buyout situation. The buyout with Amari. Uh, how, what do you feel like uh, mid year, uh, these teams that are grasping? Well, I mean, look, there's things I can discuss and things I can't. You know, I, I mean, I can't talk about specific players. Um, but what I can tell you is, you know, we've got a unique situation. I think when you look at a lot of the trades that have happened to this point that brought in impact players, with the exception of probably one situation, all of those players went into the receiving team as starters. And the teams that, you know, they, they conveyed significant assets, but – they ended up with a starter. Well, we're not trading anybody on our starting lineup. I mean, that, that is our starting lineup. It's one of the best starting lineups in the league. It's our core. We're committed to not only that, having them here this year, but in the future. So we're not touching that. So we're in a little bit of a different situation because yeah. were we to do something, you know, we need to find an impact player that not only fits contractually, not only fits culturally and skill-wise, but is somebody that's going to come in and play a role that – we, may, we don't believe that the guys that are here currently are capable of fulfilling. And, you know, that's a unique situation because, you know, like I said, we've seen, you know, guy, everybody was clamoring to go out and sign a big when we had guys like Myers Leonard ready to step in, and we knew he was capable of helping us. And, you know, you've seen what C.J. McCollum is capable of. And, you know, most of the guys you're talking about, you know, bringing in the role players, you know, here's a guy like C.J. In the game, he's played more than 15 minutes, guys. He's averaging 10 a game, and he's shooting 59 from the floor. Yeah. So, you know, C.J. McCollum and, and Myers Leonard and Tom Robinson and the guys, so we've got a very unique situation because we're looking at right in the middle. It's not a guy that can be – that already replicates or duplicates what we have in terms of our rotation guys. It's not going to be a starter. So we've got to find the right fit if we are going to make a move. And to your point earlier, Mike, we're open to it. We want to get better. We're always looking ways to improve the roster. But we need to be judicious in these things, not just because of the assets we may or may not convey, but because of the short and long-term effect it can have on our chemistry and our roster balance. Yeah. Because when you look at it, that, look, that was a gut-check win last night. And as talented and as gifted as guys like Damien and LaMarcus are, that win after, after our starters played 42 minutes apiece the night before and came back on you know 18 hours rest, that was about character and gut, and it was about our chemistry. And in order for us to mess around with that, we're going to have to find a guy that everybody, the, the current roster players, the coaching staff, the front office, and his future teammates are all comfortable with. Yeah. All right, Neil, we appreciate the time as always. Uh, thanks for jumping on and, uh, and catching up. And congratulations on the new contract, by the way. We haven't talked to you on the year since then. I appreciate it. Well, uh, just tell Myers, you know, just keep reminding him, shoot or shoot. Yeah. <laughs> we try to. Yeah. <laughs> We've told a lot of guys that lately. Yeah, yeah exa exa right. Matter of fact, when you have a roster full of shooters, <laughs> we, they should all be shooting, right? Right, Coach? right. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. All right, guys. You got it. Neil O'Shea, President of Basketball Ops for the Trailblazers, uh, our guest here on Trailblazers Courtside.